Welcome back everyone, my name is Echo. I hope you're having a great day. Today's video is a brand new episode for the Minecraft Q&A series. And ladies and gentlemen, I've just come across an article as to why Sony do not want to do cross-platform play with Xbox and Nintendo. It's pretty scummy. Today's episode is really interesting. Thank you so much for the questions. The main reason for the vlog introduction is because outside that window, I currently have builders going on. So if you hear any crazy noises, it's not me. Let's get into this and I hope you enjoy. Guys, as I explained, if you do hear any loud banging or mechanical sounds, it's not my fault. There's builders outside of my house. But let's get into this video because I do have some interesting information as to why Sony do not want to do cross-platform play. Remember Sony's motto, for the players. They should change their motto for their bank account. So an ex-Sony employee kind of wrote some information online to a very, very popular gaming news website, and I'll leave that article down below. And this is what it says. There's a very good, if obvious, reason why Sony is not allowing cross-platform play with Xbox or Nintendo. John Smedley, former president of Sony Online Entertainment, currently Daybreak Games, has weighed in on the ongoing debacle with Sony's disinterest in allowing cross-platform play between Sony, PlayStation, and Xbox One or Nintendo Switch. According to Smedley, it was always about money. When I was at Sony, the stated reason internally for this was money. Smedley revealed on Twitter, they don't like someone buying something on Xbox and it being used on PlayStation. Simple as that, dumb reason, but there it is. He did seem positive, however, that this stance could change with enough pressure. Now, Sony have a lot of pressure on them because this is the third time Third time that Sony have declined cross-platform play. It happened with Rocket League, it happened with Minecraft, and it's now happened with Fortnite. The biggest game in the world at this moment. But Sony just want the money. That is, the, that is literally the only reason why they don't want to do cross-platform play. Now, we're living in the modern year. It's 2018. It's pretty obvious that people are just going to be spending money on all versions. Whether you're on Nintendo, whether you're on Xbox, whether you're on PlayStation. Sony are getting really, really greedy here. Now, as I explained, with enough pressure, this could change because this has caused a lot of outrage. And at this moment, a lot of people who play PlayStation are looking elsewhere because they want to do cross-platform play. If you have Fortnite on PlayStation 4 and you own a Switch, you can't take your Fortnite account over to Switch, meaning that you lose all your V-Bucks and all the things that you've purchased. That is really, really scummy. But that's the information I have for you. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comment section. And let's get into today's episode. So last week, I brought you guys a new poll. Always answer the poll above me. I simply said, should villagers have quests for players? 94% said yes. 5% said no. The extra 1% went missing for potatoes. I don't know why it does 99%. But yeah, obviously, we all would like to see quests. Some of you guys did comment saying we've already got quests. You kind of go out on adventure and then you bring the villager what you, you have for trading. I mean, I want something more quest feel like related, you know? Now, the next thing I have for you is this. Bedrock dedicated server. This was actually found on the Minecraft Bedrock bug tracker. And apparently... It's something that's going to be introduced to the Bedrock servers. It's basically going to be more resources for the Bedrock servers. So they work better. It's a lot smoother. I've kind of stopped playing the Bedrock servers because they're really buggy. They're really laggy. And everyone disconnects from the game. So it looks like the developers are introducing something pretty smart for the developers, which I think is a pretty good thing. Now, the first question we have today, not really a question, but more of a comment. Coming from Real Ben MC, so the nitwit is an unemployed villager. So maybe it could have trading but offers evil trades. Now, a couple of people like this, but a couple of people responded to his comment. I like the idea behind evil trades, but what about, what about a gambler trader? So basically, you give him 64 iron, he could give you 64 diamonds, or it could be something completely terrible like 64 dirt. It's kind of like the risk taker. I kind of like the idea behind that. It's the nitwit. He's unemployed. He's got to make money somehow. So maybe he could do like different trades. That's kind of what I was thinking. But I really don't think they're going to change too much in the nitwit. I just kind of really like that idea. But thank you so much, Ben. I appreciate it. The next one coming from Ray's Heroes. Question. Will they ever rework on some of the features? They are revamping most of the default texture. 
Shore 1.13 is known as the rework for the oceans. 1.9 is known as the rework for the combat update. What about mobs? Now I like this. I like this question a lot. Let's start off with the revamping. The default texture is being reworked, recompleted. Very, very soon the default textures in Minecraft will completely change. 1.13 known as the rework on the ocean, kind of. I don't think oceans were ever worked on, so it's not really much of a rework. It's more of a massive improvement. And 1.9 combat was kind of a rework, which is gonna be changed again very, very soon. But I like the idea behind a mob update. I think this could be really, really good. Now in the past, mobs have been improved. Skeletons, the way they move, have been improved. Zombies have been improved. There's, there's a couple of others that have been improved. Now, with the chance of villagers getting an update, why not just a mob update? We could go back and change the likes of Blaze that could be developed into a Blaze King. Maybe Wither Skeletons could change into something. But you have to remember, I don't want them to take away the core mechanics of Minecraft. I don't want them to be changing sheep. I don't want them to be changing pigs, cows. Because they are just pigs, cows, sheep. They don't really do anything in real life, so they really shouldn't do something in Minecraft other than the basic things that they do. Give you milk, give you... I mean, the pig rate doesn't give you anything great, does it? But gives you milk, gives you um, wool and stuff like that. So, what do you guys think? A mob update? Highly possible, considering villages are going to be changing. Now, the next question from Joel says, Hey, Echo Q&A, do you think they could add new weapons and tools? And what do you think, with that update, maybe some new ores? I think that the ore in Minecraft is really boring. What do you think? Now, with the possibility of getting a cave update, if they do introduce a cave update, I 100% support getting an ore introduced to Minecraft. Whether that's one ore, two ores, or three ores, just one ore could change Minecraft forever. Look at iron, guys. Iron is used for so many things. Iron is used for tools. Iron is used for armor. Iron is used for the beacon. Iron is used for hoppers. It is used for so many different things. So just one ore could change Minecraft massively. And hopefully the developers realize that because with the update aquatic, they've definitely realized that if they are introducing features, it needs to be features that are going to be entertaining for a very long time. Now they do have rubies in the game coding. Now granted that rubies were basically meant to be emeralds. They changed the, the color to, to emeralds because rubies were very similar to redstone. Who knows? Maybe it's going to be rubies. Let me know what you think. Let me know what ore do you think they could introduce in the comment section. The next one says, they confirmed barrier blocks and scoreboards on bedrock. Hype. More of a comment than a question. Yes, we do have barrier blocks. Yes, they're available in beta. And yes, they are going to be very useful. They're going to be useful for the creator builder, adventure maps, and servers. Barrier blocks, it's basically invisible bedrock but a little bit more advanced, a little bit more useful. Scoreboards, now these are gonna be really good. Scoreboards are gonna be good for maps, the adventure maps, survival maps, they're gonna be great for the likes of servers because servers will be officially able to track your stats, your kills, the games you've won, the unlocks that you've done and so much more. Now we do have a couple of scoreboards on, so on some servers, but they're developed by the servers, not developed by Mojang themselves. So they really don't have official support. It's kind of like third party support. But scoreboards is something that will be coming to servers very soon. And I don't really play servers anymore because every time I play, one, everyone always disconnects for the game. Two, the game's always laggy. And three, I always randomly die by a glitch. So hopefully the servers will get improved very, very soon. The next one from Supergamer64, Q&A. Do you think that the tutorial world will be updated for console aquatic update comes out? Yes! I think 4J Studios will introduce one last big aquatic update um, tutorial world. The reason why is the aquatic update is going to be the last ever update on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and Wii U. So they're going to introduce a brand new tutorial world. It's definitely going to happen. So uh, yeah, they're going to go out with a bang, introduce the aquatic update, introduce a new tutorial, and probably introduce something different as well. But yes. It's gonna be pretty cool to check out because the tutorial world has come a very long way. The next question from Landon, Echo, please answer. What happened to the coral slabs that we seen in the trailer for the update aquatic Q and A? This is a good question this. And this is where Mojang don't realize that when they introduce a trailer, we literally look at every single frame, every single detail. They did have coral slabs in the trailer. They were never officially introduced. Now this question was asked towards Dinnerbone and Jeb they said that they were just there for placeholders for the trailer. Kind of like misunderstanding really because everybody would have liked the coral slabs. 
but they were just there simply for placeholders. I think they just retextured the stone block for that trailer, but unfortunately, no core slabs will be introduced because the update aquatic is nearly fully released. The next question from Solar Master, hashtag ask echo, do you think they should have added a little less features for the update aquatic? So it comes out sooner, then add some later, or do you think that they should add all of them at once, then spend several weeks working on bug fixes these features cre create? It's a really tough one. Now, Mojang said that they were split between two options, introducing two major updates a year or introducing like five or six smaller updates. Most people wanted two major updates. The Update Aquatic should have been released by now. By the time I'm making this video, the Update Aquatic should have already been out for Bedrock, for Java version, all right? They hit some major issues and delayed it. That's just the way things happen in, in gaming development. Now, the Update Aquatic will be out very soon, which means after the Update Aquatic, they're gonna start focusing on the next major update. I, I think the way they've done it now is probably the right way. You can't help bugs. It happens in all gaming development. I just hope that they get it out sooner rather than later. The next question from Firemaster, Echo Q&A. We have a major nether boss mob, the Wither. We have a major end boss mob, the Ender Dragon. So is the Phantom the overworld boss mob? If not, when do you think the overall boss mob is coming? Now, yes, we do have a nether kind of boss mob, the Wither, the Ender Dragon for the end. The Phantom is not the overworld mob. The only so-called boss mob for the overworld was the Elder Guardians. Now, I talked about this in the last Q&A. The Elder Guardian could be a really, really good boss mob if it wasn't always trapped inside the Ocean Monument. Maybe they spawned around them, you know? I just, I hate that. I feel like the Elder Guardian could be a good boss battle if it was outside the Guardian Temple. I don't think we're going to get a dedicated overworld boss mob because there's so much going on. If they're ever going to introduce a new boss mob, it's more than likely going to have to be in a new dimension. Which brings me on to the question. What would the new dimension be? You guys can leave a comment down below. Uh, the last question we have today is coming from Mustachio. Hey, Mustachio. They should bring back Secret Feature Fridays. When they can, where they can, re they can at least add one new thing every Friday, no matter how small it is. Let me just read that again. They should bring back Secret Feature Fridays, where they can at least add one new thing every Friday, no matter how small it is. Now, I think he means in terms of revealing. The Minecraft developers and everyone associated with Minecraft and Microsoft get really triggered when we ask so many questions about updates. They get really defensive. I don't know why, that's just the way they are. Going back plenty of months ago, maybe a year ago, Tommaso, Don, Geek, all these developers used to continuously, frequently tease us with features that were going to be introduced. I feel like we don't get teased enough. You look at Fortnite, they are continuously showing new things. If you're kept up to date, you know what's going to be happening and it keeps the community happy. Like he said, even if it's a small feature, if you preview it, tell us what's coming, it gets us all excited. And I don't think they've realized that, but maybe in the future they can introduce like a weekly teaser. Whether it's something small, I think it'll be a fun idea. But that's the questions. Those are the questions we have this week. Some brilliant questions. Hopefully I've answered them to the best of my ability and you guys understand what's going on. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about the Sony cross-platform player situation? Do you play on Sony? Are you planning on switching? Do you just want to have cross-platform play? I don't know, let me know. Any more questions about Minecraft, of course, because that's the main part of the series. Leave them down below. Have a great day, stay beautiful, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.